Becoming an EMT is a great way to gain clinical experience and stand out on your medical school applications. That being said, it's not for everyone. Here's what you need to know about becoming an EMT. Dr. Jubal, MedSchoolInsiders.com. This is the second video in our new extracurricular series where we dive deep into various pre-med extracurriculars to help you decide which ones are right for you. Let us know which extracurricular you'd like to see next in the comment section below. Emergency medical technicians, or EMTs, are healthcare professionals who specialize in the treatment and transport of sick or injured patients in the pre-hospital setting. They are trained to assess a patient's condition, administer life support measures such as CPR and supplemental oxygen, and stabilize patients for transport to a hospital or other medical facility. EMTs work in a variety of settings, including ambulances, fire departments, and other emergency medical services settings. There are three different levels of EMT certification, each with varying degrees of training and scopes of practice. EMT basic is the first level of certification. Basic EMT's responsibilities consist of non-invasive interventions for low-acuity patients and assisting other higher-level personnel, such as advanced EMTs and paramedics, with higher-acuity patients. Examples of treatments that a basic EMT can provide include administering aspirin for chest pain, providing supplemental oxygen for shortness of breath, and monitoring vital signs. In addition, they are trained to administer basic life support, including CPR, bleeding control, and basic airway management. Advanced EMT, or AEMT, is the next level of certification. An advanced EMT is able to perform all of the duties of an EMT basic, plus limited invasive treatments to care for higher acuity patients. This includes placing intravenous catheters, or IVs, for fluid or medication administration, administering nebulizer treatments for asthma or COPD exacerbation, and placing supraglottic airways, among others. The exact scope of an AEMT can vary depending on the state or medical system. For instance, an AEMT working in a more rural area may have a greater scope of practice than an AEMT working in a large city. The last level of certification is the EMTP, more commonly referred to as the paramedic. Paramedics render invasive treatments for severely ill or injured patients. They are able to assess and stabilize a wide variety of life-threatening conditions, including cardiac arrest, respiratory failure, heart attacks, and severe trauma. As such, their scope of practice is much greater than basic or advanced EMTs. They can administer a wide variety of medications, including narcotics, and antiarrhythmics. They can perform endotracheal intubation for airway management, cardioversions for dysrhythmias, and needle chest decompression for pneumothoraces, all while in the back of a moving ambulance. For those looking to take their EMS career further, there are additional certifications for paramedics, including critical care paramedic, flight paramedic, and tactical paramedic. It should be noted that all EMTs work under a medical director and adhere to state protocols which dictate what treatments or interventions they can and cannot do. These protocols serve as standing orders orders to administer treatments without a doctor present. As such, the scope of practice for EMTs, AEMTs, and paramedics can vary significantly depending on the location or medical system. In some instances, EMTs may need to contact an emergency medicine physician for permission to administer a particular medication or intervention, even when it's clinically indicated. To become an EMT in the United States, you must complete an accredited EMT course and pass a written and practical skills exam administered by the National Registry of Emergency Emergency Medical Technicians, or NREMT for short. EMT basic courses are typically 10 to 12 weeks or approximately 150 hours in duration and consist of in-class lectures, practice scenarios, and clinical experiences. Once you've completed your EMT basic course and passed the NREMT exam, you can apply for an advanced EMT program. Advanced EMT programs consist of an additional 10 to 14 weeks or 300 hours of training. Similar to the EMT basic course, this typically consists of some combination of in class lectures, practice scenarios, and clinical experiences. Lastly, to become a paramedic, you must hold either an EMT basic or EMT advanced certification. Paramedic courses are typically 8 months to 1 year in duration, which equates to roughly 800 to 1000 hours of training. In addition to the length of training, paramedic programs have much more intensive clinical components, often consisting of ambulance ride-alongs and in-the-hospital training. Once you've become certified as an EMT, AEMT, or paramedic, finding a job is often fairly simple as many areas face widespread understaffing. Most companies will require some sort of testing as part of their interview process, so it's important to brush up on your clinical knowledge and skills ahead of time. Next, let's talk about the benefits of becoming an EMT as a pre-med. The most obvious benefit is that you'll gain a great deal of knowledge and clinical experience by working as an EMT. You'll have the opportunity to take histories, obtain vital signs, perform physical exams, and administer care to patients, all before ever stepping foot into medical school. Whereas other common pre-med jobs 
jobs such as medical scribing or research are significantly limited in their ability to interact with patients, EMTs are directly involved in patient care. In addition, EMTs work alongside many other members of the healthcare team, including nurses, physician assistants, and doctors. This allows you to ask questions to further your medical knowledge and build relationships with people who may ultimately be able to write you a letter of recommendation for your medical school application. Being an EMT also allows you a great deal of flexibility that other pre-med jobs do not. Emergencies don't clock out after 5 p.m. or take breaks during the holidays. As such, EMTs work around the clock to deliver care to their patients. In many locations, EMTs also work 12-hour shifts, allowing them to be a full-time employee while working only three days per week. This can give you tremendous flexibility to work around your classes and other responsibilities. EMTs also work in a variety of different settings. Although we typically associate EMTs with ambulances, this isn't the case for all EMTs. There are opportunities to work in medical offices and emergency departments, work first aid for special events, and do inter-facility transports to name a few. Each setting has its individual pros and cons, however, you can take comfort in knowing that you aren't limited to only working on an ambulance. Lastly, becoming an EMT can help you develop your abilities as a leader and give you a taste of true responsibility for your patients. As an EMT, you're often called upon to care for patients in unfamiliar environments. As such, you need to be able to survey the scene and take control of the situation in order to effectively care for your patients, which requires strong leadership skills. In addition, the decisions that you make while working as an EMT can have lasting consequences for your patients. Although all EMTs treat patients based on protocols, the scenarios you'll face are not always black and white. You'll regularly experience situations that challenge you to think outside of the box and use the resources available to you to deliver the best quality care to your patients. Although there are many benefits to being an EMT, there are some drawbacks that you should be aware of. First, there's the time and training. Becoming an EMT requires anywhere from a few months to a couple of years to complete depending on the level of certification. This means either delaying your undergraduate studies or taking on a heavier course load while you complete your EMT training. In contrast, other pre-med jobs such as medical scribing don't require any type of certification and allow you to start working and gaining experience immediately. Next, there's the schedule. Although the flexible schedule of an EMT can be beneficial in some ways, it can also be challenging in others. Because emergencies happen at all hours of day, every day of the year, you may have to regularly work nights, weekends, or holidays while the rest of your friends are enjoying their time off. Being an EMT can also be incredibly stressful. Due to the nature of emergencies, strong emotions are commonplace. You'll regularly treat patients who are scared, sad, or even angry, and sometimes those feelings get taken out on you. Poor outcomes are also not uncommon. For instance, it's estimated that only about 10% of patients who experience cardiac arrest outside of the hospital survive. This means that, as an EMT, you'll become intimately familiar with death and suffering. It should come as no surprise then that burnout is incredibly common among EMTs at all levels of training. It's so common, in fact, that most EMT programs include topics in mental health, burnout, and stress management as part of their curriculum. This isn't to say that you shouldn't become an EMT. It can be an incredible learning experience. Rather, it's to inform you of the challenges that EMTs face so you can go into it knowing both the pros and the cons. If you've decided to become an EMT, here are some tips to help you get the most out of the experience. First, approach the job with a sense of curiosity. Although you will be limited in your roles and responsibilities as an EMT, there is no limit to how much you can learn. You can get as much or as little as you want from the experience. It's completely dependent on you and your willingness to learn. The information and the resources are there, but it's up to you to seek them out. Next, use the opportunity to hone your communication skills. Arguably, the biggest benefit that being an EMT has over other pre-med extracurriculars is that you'll be directly involved in patient care. Effective communication is crucial for your future career as a physician, and the sooner you're able to develop these skills, the better off you'll be. As an EMT, you'll meet and communicate with dozens of people each day. Use this as an opportunity to hone your communication skills and work effectively as part of the healthcare team. It's also important to keep your end goal in mind. Although it can be exciting to get out there and start taking care of patients, don't lose sight of the bigger picture. Some pre-meds unintentionally prioritize extracurriculars, such as being an EMT, over other aspects of their medical school application. Remember, your extracurriculars are only one piece of the puzzle. You still need to put sufficient time and effort into other aspects of your application, including your GPA, MCAT, research, and volunteer work. Although it's good to have strong extracurriculars, extracurriculars alone won't earn you an acceptance to medical school. Lastly, use your time as an EMT as an opportunity to network. Although most EMT jobs won't allow you to work directly with physicians, 
you'll still regularly communicate with them when transporting patients to and from the hospital. Use these opportunities to network with the people around you. You never know what doors may open up for you simply because of who you know. And that is everything you need to know about becoming an EMT. Is there anything I missed? Let me know with a comment below. And if your dream is to become a doctor, check out the Med School Insider's Pre-Med Roadmap to Medical School Acceptance course. We cover the nuances and details of how to be a standout pre-med, including course scheduling, extracurriculars beyond being an EMT, research, common mistakes and pitfalls to avoid, and our tactics to securing full scholarships to top medical schools. This is the guide we wish we had back as pre-meds ourselves. We're so confident you'll love it, it's backed by a 30-day 100% money-back guarantee. And if you sign up using the discount code and link in the description, you'll receive 20% off the course. If you'd like to be a part of Med School Insiders, we are currently hiring. We're looking for a director of content and also a few writers to help us create and manage our growing YouTube and social media presence. Visit medschoolinsiders.com forward slash hiring or click the link in the description for more details and how to apply. Thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, check out the Pre-Med's Guide to Medical Scribing or this other video. And make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on any future videos in our Pre-Med Extracurricular series. Much love and I'll see you guys there.